And you're watching Paul Corn Bow Hunting Channel! Paul Corn from the Paul Corn Bow Hunting Channel. Hey, just a couple of tips today on shed hunting. It is early March 2016, and we've got a group of people down here at Tombstone Creek Outfitting. We're looking for sheds. A couple of real basic concepts that we like to use. Number one, when you're shed hunting, you try to cover as much ground as you possibly can, and you really want the lighting to be correct. Very, very important. Right now I'm walking into the sun. You can see me squinting a little bit. I'm actually looking at a lot of shadows and a lot of lines, and it makes it harder to pick the sheds out. When you get a, right after a rain is a really good time to shed hunt. Everything is wet, it kind of makes them stand out. Like people that artifact hunt, they always go to a, you know, into a field after it rains. Makes a lot of sense. And if it's cloudy, the lighting is correct. You can see so much better. Now, we got out here early this morning before the sun comes up. A lot of times people when they're shed hunting, they're kind of lackadaisical about it. They're, you know, they, they don't get out real early. You definitely want to get out very early in the morning when the sun's coming up so you got better lighting. I try not to walk directly into the sun. If like I'm driving a field or something on a four-wheeler, I would actually run down, get the sun behind me, run down, get the sun behind me. I don't even like to look into the sun. It's very, very difficult. It's amazing how you can go through an area when it's real bright and shiny and a lot of shadows and not find anything and then come back after a rain or after on a cloudy day and things will just jump out to you. So that's very important. Another thing, when you're looking for the sheds, you're not looking for the entire shed. Kind of like when you're looking for deer, you don't look for a whole deer, you're looking for an ear, you're looking for a leg, you're looking for a, ver a horizontal line of their back. Sheds are exactly the same way. I'm looking for the curvature of the beam, the, the tines being in line, that sticks out to me, and like the, uh, the base or the round. Depending on how a shed is laying, a lot of times I'm looking for a round circle. If I'm looking at the base, if it happens to be laying that way as I approach it, something that just, your eye gets trained to it, and you really always have to scan. You need to keep scanning. Don't lift your head up. You need to look. And it really, it's pretty tiring because you're walking, you're physically demanding the walking, and then just concentrating is probably the hardest thing. You really need to concentrate. Uh, a good friend of mine, Mark Johnson from Hudson, Wisconsin, taught me, you know, probably 90% of what I learned about shed hunting, or what I had learned about shed hunting. And, you know, he... I knew you had to put a lot of miles on, but put good miles on. Really scan things. And if you want to look at sign or a rub or a scrape or where you might want to put a tree stand because you are out scouting as long as, as well as shed hunting, you make sure that you stop. You know, do when you get sidetracked, you just stop and look around. And then when you go back to shed hunting, you're shed hunting. You got to look at the ground. You got to scan. I mean, I know when I started shed hunting with Mark, I would walk through an area and he'd come right up behind me and pick them up like they were, like I couldn't believe it. But I was walking by him because I, I'm too easily, or I was too easily distracted. We've been down in Missouri now here for the last six days and we've probably found 50 of them between, between four of us. And, you know, we find a handful every day. It's not easy, but remember, the lighting, very important. Remember, scan the ground. You're not looking for a whole antler, you're looking for parts of the antler. And you know what? They can be, you know, you want to concentrate on areas that have a lot of, uh, you know, deer signer activity. Uh, the more time they spend in an area, the more likely their antlers will drop off. But you know what? They can drop off anywhere. And, you know, we found them in the most unusual places. But, you know, so I like to spend a lot of time in areas where the deer spend a lot of time, but also don't overlook some of these other spots. And you just know that. You know, it's, you're probably going to walk maybe five or six miles, maybe ten miles before you find one. And, and that's just the way it is. I always tell people that it's amazing how if you're in your tree stand and you have your little screw-in bow holder and you drop it or your grunt call or your can call or you drum, how many times everybody drop their gloves, something out of a tree stand, and they know it's right down below them. It's right there on the ground. And you get down, and especially if the lighting's not good, it's a little bit dark, even in the morning, you got great lighting, the sun's out, you go down there. How many times have you just gave up because you couldn't find something that you knew fell from the tree stand and it's right there somewhere? Now you're looking for something that can fall off a deer's head and can be anywhere. It's hard. You know, think about when you, 
you know you hit a deer good and it rained overnight and the deer ran you know east and you're gonna walk east how hard is it to find the whole deer now you're looking for just a little piece of that deer and you really need to concentrate you really need to figure out what you're looking for and you really need to scan and wait for the right conditions and just do it smart and you'd be surprised how many more sheds you will find in a situation like that is we're actually scouting you're out in the spring the woods like look like they did last fall and you can kind of, I guess, pick up on what you might have missed out on the year before. Here I'm just walking a finger. You can probably see the field in the background. This is one little finger that comes off the neighbor's property. I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it, but I found a bunch of really nice rubs heading out towards that field. Now, you know, we're 150 yards from the fence line. And this would be a great spot to sneak into and set a stand up in here. There's all kinds of trails and just a lot of sign, a lot of little rubs and things. So these are the things that we learn while we're out shed hunting. But you also keep in mind, you got to be careful that you keep looking for sheds too. It's real easy to get wrapped up in, you know, and seeing all this beautiful sign. And you start looking around for where you're going to put a tree stand and all that stuff. You need to make sure that you don't get too sidetracked, that you stop look at the deer sign and then get back to doing what you do get back to walking my dad is actually out driving that field with the four-wheeler and i'm walking all the fingers so he can cover a lot of ground uh, just by taking you know little strips back and forth and uh, mark and i are walking all these little fingers in the woods so let's see what we can find it's a really good idea when you're looking into the sun that you slow down and that also you know, you're going to go at a slower pace and you also stop and look back every now and then. Because as you're looking back, you get a better view. It's, you're not squinting, you can see better. So I like to stop and look back and scan. Same thing when I'm scouting for deer sign. A lot of times you'll notice a rub when you look back. You don't recognize it from one direction, but especially unless you walk right past it. But if it's off to your left or your right a little bit and you look back, you'll pick it up. And remember, when you stop and look back and you start to move forward again, you just take your time and go slow. And you're looking for, this is what you're looking for. Here is two vertical lines kind of pointing out the shed fell and kind of a, fell in a good position really because it's sticking up. So you could see the profile of the, of the time. Let's see what we got here. Oh yeah. Get off for a little while. Nice four point side. Laying right here. So we're really, we're only about, oh, I would say maybe 100 yards from where Al Escobedo killed a deer by the Thompson River here. Oh, a few years ago, I think 2012, something like that. I just walked by that tree and I was really taking my time and looking over because there's a lot of deer sign, a lot of trails and stuff in here. And it's real thick. And it's right before they cross the ditch. So spending a lot of time and by God we found one. Check it out.